Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is the boy who had epilepsy. A father of a boy with epilepsy brought his son to Jesus' disciples, but they seemed unable to set the young man free. This is a very important story for us to understand. This story is found in Luke chapter 9. There's a fascinating flow to the events and the stories that we find in Luke chapter 9. It begins with Jesus choosing 12 disciples to follow him and giving them power and authority over demons and diseases. After watching Jesus heal, now the apostles themselves are empowered to heal. Let's recognize that the apostles are at the very beginning of their healing ministry. Everything has a learning curve. People have said to me that if someone truly has the gift of healing, then everyone will be healed. Well, that's just nonsense. Because if you have the gift of evangelism, not everyone you share your faith with decides to follow Jesus. And if you are a pastor or teacher, it does not mean that your first sermon is the very best it could be. There is a learning curve to everything. There is a learning curve to healing and deliverance. Now back to the sequence of events in Luke chapter 9. After Jesus released power and authority to the disciples, they begin going out and healing people everywhere. They return to Jesus rejoicing that demons are subject to them. And Jesus clarifies for them the real reason to rejoice. He said rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Demons and diseases are subject to followers of Jesus because their names are written in the book of heaven. When you tell a disease to go, they check to make sure your name is in the book and then send healing. Jesus said, rejoice that we know who you are and answer your prayers for healing. If you're not sure if your name is written in the book of heaven, do so right now and you'll have access to power and authority over diseases and demons. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus takes three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, sometimes known as his inner circle of friends, and takes them up on a high mountain. And while they are there, Jesus is transfigured before them. This means that Jesus was momentarily seen in the full glory he had with the Father in heaven before coming to earth. Then Peter, James, and John hear the voice of God saying, This is my beloved Son, listen to him. So whatever Jesus has said, that is what we need to listen to. And Jesus has just given power and authority to the disciples over all demons and diseases. While Peter, James, and John are with Jesus on the mountain, the other disciples are approached by the father of the young man, of the boy with epilepsy, and they can't seem to help him. The father of the son sees Jesus coming down the mountain and he rushes up to meet him and says to him, your disciples could not set my son free. He said, I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Luke chapter 9 and verse 40. Religious people beg for miracles. When you understand delegated authority, you don't beg God for a miracle. By the authority that has been invested in you, you make a healing declaration and God releases power. This is a very important lesson to learn about healing. So Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to your son? And he said, from childhood, Mark chapter 9 and verse 21. Then the father said, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Mark chapter 9 and verse 22. 
Jesus reacted strongly to that. What do you mean if I can? Are you asking me if I can heal your son? Uh, Jesus was protecting his disciples from criticism. Jesus knows the disciples have come under an attack of unbelief. Not only have they been attacked, but Jesus himself is being attacked. He had just released power and authority to the disciples, and that authority is being challenged by this man and the demons affecting his son. What do you mean if I can? You don't believe I can? Now Jesus, when he said that, wants the father's faith to grow rather than having him criticize the faith of others. Then Jesus says to the father, all things are possible for the one who believes. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. Let's look at the symptoms the young boy has. When we read the accounts of his story in Matthew and Mark and Luke, we learn that he would suddenly cry out. Maybe you have a flash pain and causes you to cry out randomly. He had convulsions or seizures or epileptic fits. Uh, he was foaming at the mouth. He was grinding his teeth. He would fall into fire or water. He would be for a period of time unable to speak and he became rigid. I remember my father sharing a story with me about a young man who was demonized in South Africa. When my dad tried to pick him up, he picked him up just like a board, completely stiff. And that is how dad knew there was demonic activity in this person's life. So then here are the seven symptoms of the father's son. Sudden cries, epileptic seizures, foaming at the mouth, grinding teeth, falling into fire or water, muteness, and becoming rigid. A crowd is quickly gathered, so Jesus asks the father to bring the child to him. And Jesus cast the spirit out of the child, and the young man was delivered from all seven symptoms at once. Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father, Luke chapter 9 and verse 42. Notice the boy was healed. The young boy was not just delivered. He was healed. So we want to release healing to you right now. We'll take all your symptoms and pull them together and cast them out in the name of Jesus. If you have a child who is coming under some or all of these symptoms, consider the possibility that there is demonic activity connected to the physical problems that your child is facing. I'm going to ask God to do something for your precious child uh, right now. Go right now in the name of Jesus. I say to your child with these symptoms, come out of him or her right now in the name of Jesus. I feel power on the word that I just gave. Believe with me that all things are possible with God. If a doctor has told you you have multiple symptoms and there's nothing they can do for you, there is still hope for you. If you just felt a healing presence of the Lord come upon you, message me and tell me what has just happened. Now imagine with me you are one of the disciples and you have watched all of this happen. You've got to be asking the question, how come we could not do it? Mark chapter 9 and verse 28 says, when he had entered the house, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why could we not cast it out? And Jesus gave a very important answer. He said, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. Now some may think I have misquoted the scripture because I did not say the word fasting. Religious people like to add the word fasting, but good study Bibles have a footnote on this verse indicating that fasting is not in the oldest and the best manuscripts. Now there's nothing wrong with fasting, but it is not a requirement for healing. 
Jesus neither fasted nor prayed. He spoke and the son was set free. So what is Jesus talking about when he says prayer? He is talking about intimacy with the Father. Healing flows out of spending time with Father God. It is having the assurance in your heart that nothing is impossible with God. What Father calls you to do, he empowers to be done. Now don't let some religious person or devil trick you into thinking you can't be used by God unless you have fasted and prayed. Some of the greatest miracles I have seen happened in a moment when I was the least prepared and the least expecting for anything to happen. If Father places someone in front of you with a need, in the moment, speak the right words with the right meaning, with the right faith and the right understanding that is all you need to do, and people will be healed. In this moment, Jesus was building up the faith of his disciples to recover from their failure and then move on to their next healing opportunity. Now, there are some clues as to why the disciples were not successful in the situation, and these are worth noting. Here are some of the things the disciples were doing that contributed to their lack of success. For example, there was some arguing going on. Mark chapter 9 and verse 16, it says, uh, Jesus, when he came down from the mountain, asked the disciples, what are you arguing about with them? They were arguing with, with the religious leaders and with each other. Mark chapter 9 and verse 14 says, the scribes were arguing with them. And then later in the chapter we read, there was an argument that arose amongst the disciples as to which of them was the greatest. Healing is not going to flow through people who are arguing with religious leaders or discussing who the greatest healer amongst them is. Conversations like that put the focus of healing and deliverance on you rather than on the person who needs the blessing. As long as the disciples were focused on who is the best, healing is not going to flow. I have more anointing than you. I have more power than you. Uh, that's not how God works. He works through people who are humble. Jesus is the greatest. Jesus worked hard to help the disciples get through this learning moment. All of them got beyond this moment. All of them moved in healing and deliverance. Uh, this is why uh, it's so important that we have a learning moment for them. And there was a learning moment for them and a learning moment for us. Jesus was moved with compassion for the father and his son. God moves through the lives of people when we are moved with compassion for the people who come to us for healing. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Now, as I pray for you, we are all in a learning process. If you've had a healing failure, it just means there's more for you to learn. I pray that God would help you make it through that learning process. The devil wants you to believe that you can't be used by God and God doesn't want to use you. It's just not the truth. He does want to use you. He wants you to learn how to position yourself to be healed and to heal. God help you to understand what I've just prayed for you. I believe, Jesus believes, God believes that you are able to release his power in people's lives. You have the right desire. And so just believe and continue and God will bring you into a moment of learning and overcome your failure and into great success. I speak to migraine headaches right now. If you're suffering with a migraine headache, I say headache go, migraines go in the name of Jesus. Maybe your headache has gone uh, from a migraine into Menier's disease. I say Menier's go right now in Jesus' name. Feel like there's a left ankle that God is healing. If you have a, a problem with the left ankle, I think something fell on that ankle. 
and your ankle is fairly twisted right now and you think you have permanent injury. It's not a permanent injury. Your ankle will straighten out, your muscles will heal, and you will be completely restored. If you're suffering from autonomic system disorder, uh, people have told me that when this happens, it's like being punched in the stomach or kicked in the stomach and the life goes out of you. I come against this attack on your autonomic system. The autonomic system is that part of you which causes everything to function without you needing to tell it to function. Breathing, uh, blood pressure, blood flow, all the things that happen and move that you don't have to think about asking that organ to do it. They're automatic, they're autonomic. And I come against any attack upon your autonomic uh, system that it'll function the way God intended for it to function. We come against macular degeneration, uh, problems in the eyes. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Uh, somebody's facing emergency appendix surgery. You'll come through and your body will be restored. Uh, if you have any of the symptoms that this young man had, we come against those in the name of Jesus, especially epilepsy. If you suffer from epileptic, epileptic seizures, uh, we command those seizures to stop in Jesus' name so that you can continue to function the way God intends for you to function and have good health. If you have uh, children that have fallen into fire or water or have a tendency to place themselves in dangerous situations, it's an indication there's a high anointing upon their lives and the devil is trying to take them out of usefulness to the kingdom of God at a young age. We speak life over your child we command any forces that have come against your child, any demonic influences to be broken, go out now in the name of Jesus. As this young boy fell down and everybody was afraid he was dead, they took him up and he was very much alive and completely set free from seven symptoms. May God set you free from all the symptoms that you are facing. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Next week we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.